Okay, everybody, here is the first video made actually at school in the building. So I'm um, just going to quickly kind of a review. I know some of you have already seen it. Um, but just taking your crayon and your tissue paper and you put your textured surface underneath to try to create rubbings that capture the texture. I'm gonna do that one and I'll switch to another. Uh, I think I've got a second color here as well. And remember that you want to work with unwrapped crayons. So if you have paper on it, you're going to take those. You're going to put that underneath and then go on top. And you notice I'm switching colors, um, but I'm also switching textures. But I could leave the color the same and just switch the texture, and that would be fine. But the idea is, again, to, you're cr trying to create rubbings that capture the texture of the surface underneath and you can see it when I flip the paper around a little bit maybe I'll just add one more to it like this side I guess just for a little bit more interest and it just it does it makes the paper a lot more interesting but you know as you're working I want you to kind of think about Doho Su in his old apartment in Brooklyn just trying to capture the details that he had there um, so that you know, he could remember things in a different way, all right? So we have this. Now what we're going to do that's going to help us um, to make the sculptures, you have your wire, and you're going to um, wrap your wire into a shape. It doesn't really matter what shape. Um, you can just leave a little bit extra. So this, this is a remaining piece of wire, so it's not that big. So maybe I will do something that is somewhat triangular and so what I want to do is I want to tighten that little piece there so that I have an end piece with the stem. And maybe I'll try my best to get tight angles. It's going to be hard to get tight angles. Um, so we, what you really have to do is kind of squish a lot. <laughs> and there you go. So not an ideal triangle, but fairly close. And you can just play around with the wire till you get it a little bit closer to what you want. And for me, this is good enough. I just want to make sure that this is tightly wrapped, which is a little hard to do with fingers, not tools. Uh, and then just turn the stem up a little bit so you can see that pretty well. Then what I need to do, I have to get glue. I'm finding that it's easier to get the glue by just getting it from the top. So you're going to get your tacky glue. And if you just take your stick, you just squeeze a little of the tacky glue up towards the top. Right now, there's enough glue in there to do this and just get it onto the tip. If, if there's not enough, you can always you know, squeeze down a little bit lower, turn it over. Um, but you're just going to get a little bit of glue on the surface of your triangle. So you don't want a lot, just enough to help it stick like that. I think you can see that glue. And I'm just going to put that up here to keep it from getting all over the place. And then I'm going to put it on the back of, so you have the texture on the front. I'm gonna consider that the front. And now this on the back. I wanna get it close to an edge, but not right up against an edge, so that I have a little bit of space around it, because I'm going to have to cut around that space. So I'm just going to put that one there for now and let it sit. While that one's sitting, I'm going to grab other wire and do other things with it. So this particular wire, I wanna do a coil. Coils are lots and lots of fun. I'm just going to move this out of the way so you can see it. Well, the, you know, and again, this piece is sitting here drying, okay? I'll move that over a little bit more. It's pretty, pretty big glue. I don't have a pencil nearby, so I'm just going to, I grab the paintbrush. And I'm just going to wrap around. Pencils, you know, if you want a nice even coil, it would work better. This one is going to be slightly tapered um, but you use what you have, pen, pencil, marker, paintbrush, anything. And you see, I'm just going to kind of, I'm, tw I'm twisting it, I'm going to press it closer and then just kind of twist it more so it holds its shape. So I've got this nice little coil, it's you know, it's like a spring almost, but I'm just going to pull it out a little bit more, stretch it. So you can see it's a little bit stretched. I'm gonna stretch it somewhat evenly. Now, uh, this is a little bit drier already because again, two things, one, it's the tacky glue and two, there's not very much on it. So I'm just going to cut around this and then you'll see what I'm going to do with the coil. 
So I'm going to cut around this. Notice that I'm leaving a little bit of space as I cut around my triangle. So I'm just going to cut a little bit of space like that. You can leave a little bit less, but the reason you want to leave it is we're going to then be folding this over in a little bit and gluing it again. But let me show you how we're just going to do the coil. So the coil is going to look really interesting when you put it in the middle and you wrap around uh, and you can kind of see with the light shining through it a little bit that the coil is in here. You can sort of see the wire. Um, and what it reminds me of are the tubes that kids crawl through um, in preschool or sometimes they use them for dogs, agility courses and things like that. Um, just kind of a fun thing. So uh, I want to get a, a spot that's going to give me a little bit of space. I think I'm going to leave a little, again, just like with that one, I want to leave a little tail sticking out. So I'm not going to use the whole coil. So I want to go this way. And uh, I just want to make sure that I'm getting it in the spot. You know what, I'm going to add a little bit more texture to this just to make sure that it's getting some texture showing so that it's capturing the idea of the memory of the texture and oops goodness, that was not good um and also just a little bit of the you know you'll have the form which will be pretty interesting so i think i'll add some white as well the white shows up a little bit better against this and depending on what colors of tissue paper or crayons you have you'll want to make your choices based on that. So I'm gonna move this out of the way. And for the coil, same thing I'm going to do, I'm going to get a little bit of the glue, squeeze that up there. So get a little bit on the tip, it might be a little too much. And I'm just going to try to start by getting one basic side of it, you know? So starting with that, put this down. Oops, trying not to do that, get it here, okay. And then what I want to do is I want to place the glue side against the paper. So I'm going to press that down right here. And now I'm just going to slowly work my way around the coil with a little bit more glue. So I'm just going to keep adding a little bit more glue at a time around here. And as I add it, I'll roll. So I'll just give it a little bit of a roll and then I'm going to add some more glue. So I just want to make sure that there's enough glue that I can get all the way around and have the paper stick. And you'll see, I'm, I'm doing this slowly. This is something that requires a little bit of care and attention, so you don't want to rush it. And then that, that last little bit, just to be safe, I would just get a little bit of glue like on the tip and then just kind of make a little couple of little dots in there just so that when it rolls over the paper can stick to the paper so just like that and again trim so you have a tiny bit extra just in case you need it and for me i can see that my coil ends right here so i'm going to cut the paper right there and now just in that little last little piece of paper i'll just get a little bit of glue on the end very very little you don't want this glue to be too wet on here because what will happen is the paper will get soggy and messy and hard to use. So you see I still have that little tail that I can use for attaching. And then just up in here, I can just fold it in if I want or I can just make sure it's attached to itself in some way. So I think I'm just going to give it a little bit. I still have some glue on there, a little bit of glue there. And just to have a nice looking form I'm just going to roll those edges in so it's a nicely finished structure you can still see the wire inside and now I can go back to this one because this one is fairly dry so this is why you, you work on a few at a time and um, when they're all you know you, at the driest one first you can add glue so I'm just going to go back in now and add a little bit more glue by rubbing it against the wire and then, same thing, just fold it in. And you might need to fold the corners in a little bit differently. Just work your way around, fold your way back. And then if you do it well, 
you should have a fairly neat looking structure. And what's really awesome about having these structures, you can bend them and flex them in different directions. So once they're together, these forms can be turned, you know, these shapes can be turned into different types of forms. Uh, and then, you know, you'll figure out a way to assemble a few of them together. And what's really awesome is you have your wonderful soup cap here and you can stick one of the ends in. Oops, got to do that a little bit more carefully. You might need to poke through with your, um, your yarn needle, but you can arrange them in different ways and just use this as a base for your sculpture. So I just wanted to share that so that for anybody that isn't quite sure what to do with your Doho Sue memory pieces, you can do something like that and put them on there. But, you know, think about capturing the memories and what memory you're trying to create as you're working.